Ladies and gentlemen, um, welcome to the Jimson and Roscoe show with no Roscoe. Roscoe is going to Hereford. So, um, yeah, no Roscoe. It's just oh, me That's... and Addy Roots, yes. a.k.a. Twisted Roots. Hello. Feels really weird one person clapping. Normally I get the like, reverberation oh, really? of Roscoe clapping. Okay. Let's both clap. Yay! Yeah. Um, and Roscoe's here in spirit. He is. He was, do you know what? He was supposed to send me some questions. Let me check whether he has or not. Oh, yeah, he sent me a voice message. Has he? Okay, let's listen to it. Let's listen to the voice message. Whoa, wait there. Oh, there's fucking loads. Um, three good... Before I, do, well, I look, before I do that, Yeah. we will start a show. Three good things that have happened to you today. Okay, I do this every night. F- today. Mm-hmm. Okay, so on the way, I was driving here, and I, um, I took a wrong turn. And I decided to turn around and another car was coming and I was mindful in the moment. And the man in the other car said, excuse me, mate, this is a effing main road. And I was mindful. I didn't let it upset me. And I just carried on my way. So that's one good thing. Win win. You could say that was a bad thing. Yeah, you could say, but I'm choosing to take it as a good thing. Yeah, there's a lesson. Be, la- be grateful for everything, even the lesson. So yeah. something's bad, yeah. treat it as a lesson. Because it's a chance to Grow. practice not being distressed by yeah, things. Yeah. So that's one of my things, definitely. Um, and I think there's there's obviously a limit to that, because, like, imagine if I'd, like, bashed into his car. Yeah. That, that wouldn't be as good. I mean, did they say as well, don't they? They say you've got um, willpower fatigue. Yes. And they yeah. say you can only... So that they each person's, like, productive... Mm-hmm. at different points of the day yeah, it's yeah. Working, working out when you're best productive and you've generally got about two hours of productivity and outside of that just fucking like yeah do and, other and stuff it, which it is wears less, down which yeah, is yeah. so sometimes i'll put myself in difficult situations to test how i'm going to react to them mm. and i find at first it goes really well and then after a while i kind of lose it and i kind of digress whatever the word is back and i can't do it anymore for mm. a little while yeah, yeah i suppose it's like physical training isn't it you can do <laughs> yeah you're training, training a muscle yeah but after a while you need to rest so it can grow again but anyway that was one thing mm-hmm. can't f- what was the other thing i meditated for like an hour today really yeah do you do uh long meditations often or is it usually like only when i've got the time i don't often have the time mm. but when i do have the time i find them really useful um and then what's my third thing what position do you sit in on doing so, you're doing a long one I, if I'm quite awake and quite um, with it, I will just lie down. Okay. If I'm a bit tired or for whatever reason, if I'm a bit tired, I'll sit, I'll sit up straight yeah, to stop yeah. me from kind of falling asleep. Do you do that even if it's short as well? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Can't think of a third thing. That's not very good, is it? You're here. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And well, I learned about that thing that that guy was saying. What was it? Mushroom underground oh yeah the mycelial passage. network yeah, yeah, yeah mycelial network talking of mycelial networks <clears throat> um when you said about the um when we were talking about the willpower just then mm. something i learned the other day was um and they showed it on like a pretty video as well so it made it sink in more and like when your brain is recreating new neural pathways yeah um if you do something once you'll get like uh, like a strand, like this pathway, but it'll be temporary and it'll go yeah. and it'll disappear. Yeah. So um, the second time that you do it, it it'll come back stronger. and it'll get stronger until it like yeah, permanently yeah. etches into your brain. Mm-hmm. It was like really interesting. I was like, ah, oh, okay. And that's how um, destructive behaviours can be manifested, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. I don't know, have you ever had an experience with OCD, like where you have to do something? Yeah, my, my missus gets it a lot. She has like certain ways and certain yeah. things she has to do. I used to get that a lot of, a, all the time. And I think that's a that's like a pathway in the brain, isn't it? Like I, yeah. if I do this, then this other thing's going to be okay. Yeah. And then if you can kind of over, kind of rewire it, then you can, you can notice the behavior coming to the surface and then you can just kind of ignore it and it yeah. weakens over time. Yeah. So what, when did you start? Um, let, let's go into your background actually before we start fucking diving at the deep end mm. because um anyone who doesn't know you um we met through music innit? yeah man so um yeah yeah so, so i about your background like where what where you're from like your, your upbringing and like what led you into music um yeah so i was born in clapham in london and both of my parents um have had uh 
issues um, and they weren't able to raise me. Mm. So I ended up, um, well, they raised me for a little while and then I ended up moving in with my grandparents and then eventually they moved down to Wiltshire. And I think because I'm also, I'm mixed race, which is, is not obvious. Mm. Um, I think as a way to connect with that part of me in an area which is mostly white, mm. I kind of got into music because it was because it was like a thing that I could connect with. Um, and yeah, so I think I first I first became aware of you when I was looking for people to make music with down here, mm. and I, I saw you on MySpace. Yeah. Big up the MySpace days. And I remember, because I think you were doing quite well. Like you had a video on Channel U. Did you have a video on Channel U? Nah, nah. You had a video or something and not many people had a video at those times. Nah. The first video we had was... You'd done something. Did, Maybe you performed somewhere. We did... Um, with YMP, I know Lodos was doing um, videos. Like he had like a trailer um, for... What was the first we did? Like the trailer for the takeover? Is that thing? this song that they did? No, there was that was there was that one. That was like, I don't think I'm in that video. You're not in that video. No, I would have remembered that. Like, like there was that, but like I don't know if it's prior. No, yeah, no prior to that, there was like he done the takeover trailer and that. Yeah, and that was like Michael Lodos, Michael Jenkins. That was yeah, like yeah. his. Then I got him coming on later today, but that was mm. like I think his intro into video. Yeah. from music well whatever it was you'd done something big and I remember I messaged you I messaged Lodos as well and probably Roscoe mm. lots of people and um, you didn't reply I don't know why I'm not holding it against you okay. you <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway yeah um, I messaged loads of people and then event eventually kind of who, who replied I think Lodos got in contact and yeah and then I just started making music from there I think I was probably a bit rubbish at the time though as we all are at the we beginning. We all are, aren't we? Fucking when we start. Because it, what Roscoe said the other day, um, when Marky was on, mm. and Marky was interviewing us, and he said about Bebo. And he said yeah. that we were like really big on Bebo as yeah. YMP, I think. But yeah. It's, um, yeah. And you go on from there. Because, like, uh, well, my most of my Waste of Air LP it was all recorded at your nan's, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, man. That was and miserable times. music. Mis yeah, miserable music. Yeah. But it's um so do, do, I, when your nan moved down here, mm. you actually lived in London with your nan prior to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Down here. How did you find the transition from like Clapham to West? Well, I was quite young. I was about ten. Mm. So it, well, it was a it was a big transition, but it was I think children are kind of quite resilient in that they can yeah. just change. They it's what they like, say they're the fastest learners, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like if you wanna like this uh i've been following this course i know jim quick the guy's name is and he does mm. like speed reading and teaching people how to like like memorize things um and he said the best way to learn something is to learn like a child so like create like silly stories and silly yeah. pictures in and your head like a things. child would yeah, yeah attach it like to I me mean, it's like so you've got like this thing called like the sun list so it's like one uh one is sun two is socks three is traffic lights four okay. is um car so you've got doors on the car five is uh, uh fucking i forgot but five is memory's not that good uh, <laughs> but you know I mean it's like um yeah yeah it's uh five is star okay. so he goes uh with that like if you want to replace one you can like replace one with something else yeah so yeah. if you need to remember something in order you can like associate that and then like there was another one he done like the periodic table okay so it was like fucking like a story for each like one to element nice. uh, like remember yeah, the top yeah. row I was like, oh, fuck me, you just mer memorise the periodic table. Like, it's without, like yeah. actually knowing the periodic table. Like, But yeah, it's like, like yeah, that would be like a child yeah. like, way of learning, isn't it? I think another really good thing to learn stuff is to have like time in between when you're doing it. So instead yeah. of doing something for like an hour, do it for like 10 minutes and then stop and do it for 10 minutes. And it comes yeah. back to that, that pathway in the brain, isn't it? Because you keep it. making it stronger. And, yeah. Because you, you teach. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what ages do you teach? So primary school is um, <clears throat> reception year one, two, three, four, five, mm. and six. So did you you and your permanent? What you've you got a permanent year? Um, I did have. I had year one and two. Yeah. Um, but I've I'm doing supply for a little while now, which yeah. is cool. So I have I have year two, and then I'll also have four and five, okay. which would be cool. 
how do you find being a supply teacher? Because I remember it like when supply teachers just coming in, it was like, yes! Like, to me, just like, well, was, like unruly. But saying that, that was probably more secondary school. Yeah, secondary school. Because like, even me, like as, as a shy kid in school, even me, I was like naughty for us supply teachers. Yeah. But I think in primary school, kids are just, I don't know, as long as you've got good classroom management, they they will they'll be all right for you really yeah cause but my... but then again there will be classes that are just they won't and yeah. and, and you've just got to be okay with that and and then that can be one of my three things on my list that i didn't melt down yeah. in a lesson when all these children weren't listening to me yeah because this uh when carvel come home the other week he was upset like the supply teacher she's not a supply teacher but she's like the assistant teacher the teaching assistant yeah so she's PA. like she's there but like on a friday his normal teacher's not there anymore. Oh, okay but he really liked her and then he got upset because some other girl like had a stomach ache yeah and then he said that he had a tummy ache earlier on but she kind of overlooked it but then when she had it like she proper like gave oh, girl, so she like, wasn't consistent she wasn't con- yeah that's and, like, important he, like come home and he was like he was being like really off when he got in the car that's so important being and consistent was, yeah. and it's hard though yeah that's what it's i said like, so when i was in the car i said to him i was like when he finally come out and he was like all tearful and he was like fucking really pissed off with this like he's like I hate yeah. her I hate her he's going I was like oh. how old is he what, what year is he's he he's six so he's, so he would he's have been like your yeah, sort of like yeah yeah you're group. one or two yeah he's, he's year two so he's um, yeah with that like I was like okay and I was like I tried to explain like she probably didn't mean like to mean like but like I struggle sometimes with just you and your sister mm. Imagine fucking a class full of like 30. He was like, yeah. 32 actually. <laughs> wow, <laughs> like, 32. So wow. I mean, like, imagine like a class like 32. It's like, wow, like, we think that's something magical for a teacher to be able to hold a, the attention of 32 children. Yeah. Without doing it under some like draconian fucking law of like. I think kids do respond well to routine. So if you've got a few ways that you get their attention, so mm. I, I do count down. So three, two, one. Or one, two, three, look at me, or whatever. Or there's another thing I do is I do a clap, I go clap, and then they have to respond and do it as well. And then they, mm. but you can only, they're children, so they're only gonna um, give you their attention for a little while because mm. you can't expect them to sit there and look at you for like an hour. Yeah. You've, got to, you've got to mix it up, really. I mean, you can't really get that from adults either. Like, exactly, so yeah, I would sure. zone out. Because it's, because um, we, we've had like, we don't like the school system. Mm. Um, how do you find the school system as a teacher? Um, yeah, I mean... Like, it, do you find, like, the curriculum is uh, doesn't give you enough freedom as a, as a teacher? Um, I think because I'm quite early in my mm. career, I'm still grappling with um, being able to deliver it properly yeah, and, yeah. and as good as I like it. But I do think... Because I always hear people say about school, like, oh, why are they teaching these kids how to... Um, why are you teaching, teaching these kids about history when they should teach them about this other thing? But at primary school in particular, I think it's about giving the children as much like variety and give, mm. introducing them to everything, yeah, like yeah. history, RE, everything. But I suppose what you're saying is the curriculum is quite like prescriptive. Rigid, isn't it? yeah. So it's yeah. not like you can't like deviate off it. Like, so for example, if like in the real world, you'd be like, I don't know, say you were studying, like, let's take history for example. Say you, your topic was ancient Greece. Mm. But then something come up, like, as a side note from ancient Greece. Yeah. And you were like, okay. And then it's like, let's delve into that because you all seem to be interested in that. It's not, it's like, no, 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 come back here. We're, we're only doing this. We're doing this. I mean, it's like, there's not so much freedom of like, okay, or, or how, or how it's taught. So example, I don't, I find like, I say maths. Maths very just like, okay, like, um, this is the way we teach it. Mm-hmm. There's no like alternative ways of teaching it. It's like, so one kid might not understand on that. So there's no like, it seems to be like, no, this is the way we're learning it. We're learning it by this method and you have to like grasp this method, which I kind of understand. It's like, but like that child might not grasp that method first. That child might need to learn the other method before coming back. It's like, oh, okay, now that method makes sense. Yeah. It's like very rigid. Um, and I don't, I, I actually don't quite agree with when people say like, oh, they should be teaching them like life skills and cooking and stuff. It's like, well, mm. Has always been like the role of the parent, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like you should be teaching your skills. Yeah, yeah. I do think financial education should be taught in schools. That's yeah, one of the things I think be. they should add. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like I've spoke to a lot of people now. It's like I've just come up on the show because we we're, we're on about taking the car out and homeschooling them. It's mm-hmm. like just really like thinking about it now, like in, in next year. Yeah. 
but like a lot of people said like try another school first because okay. the school is like there's like there's no artwork on the walls and really? like, it's like just like it's just real it's just, like, just looks like it's like they're 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 excellent in Ofsted Oh, yeah. But then, for someone to say they're excellent off scale, it's like the it's amount of homework necessary. and shit is coming yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. It's like there's, they're not so much exploring arts and stuff. It's very maths, English, like. Do you mean it's like? Okay. And he had like a D and T book. We went in to look at the the books. And it was like D and T, and I was like, "Do you know what D and T is? It's design technology." It's like what was in the book? It was just like some like little pictures. Like, have you actually done like? Did you make anything? The, did you make anything? The did he make anything? No. What? No. I said, no. Just to do that, like some cut ants <laughs> and that. I was like, what the fuck? I like, didn't like. <laughs> Like, it's the same with science, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I think, like, I mean, the problem with main institutions of science is, like, they get the bloody, getting paid by whoever's funding the course. And there's mm. no, like, yeah. let's just question something to fucking question something. And, like, do you mean? Which yeah. is what it really is, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is just science, someone fucking, isn't it? That is what science someone is. Someone sat in a field, like, fucking, <laughs> do you mean? Newton, fucking the apple mm. falls. Like, oh. I wonder why that happened. <laughs> What's holding us to the floor? Like, you mean? It's like just fucking question it and then try yeah. and like figure out if we're wrong. But yeah, I don't know. I just find like, and I look at the teachers in that uh, that school in particular, and they all like seem to be ground down. It's like I remember last year on the parents even speaking to her, and it was like I was trying to like find out about his emotional, social development and all that. Like, how is he in peer groups and yeah. like all that? And she just kept trying to brush off to like just tell me about how the targets he was hitting oh, for like that's shame, just like it's like fuck yeah. it's five you know what I mean it's like yeah. fucking, he's not like studying for like his fucking oh, like, that's a difficult one I can imagine though where she's coming from because there is a lot of pressure and, 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 yeah. and some parents like parents vary so much just like the children so yeah. there are some parents that will come in and won't want to hear about the other stuff they'll just want to hear about is he yeah. on t- target is he getting with this? grades yeah. yeah even at five yeah. it's crazy so she doesn't know who's like what you're like when you're coming yeah um, and the worst thing it was over the phone as well because we oh, like, yeah, you wouldn't I like to go and see him yeah because it was last that was last year for the mm. over the phone yeah COVID. I did it's some like, of those as well it's just like it, it is, the, the trouble with it is at the end of the day, you're putting this is in a state-run school. Yeah, you're uh, basically fucking giving the government freedom to fucking educate your child, and the government fucking don't really have the best interests. Do you mean I don't find no. it's like here you go, here's your one size fucking fits all. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So do you do you where where you're teaching? Do you find you have more freedom? Yeah, I do. But also to come back to what you were saying before about if you're teaching one thing and then you find that the kids have an interest in another thing. Mm. I do think that there is, I think in primary school, there's room to do that a little Mm. bit. And I think it would even be encouraged in some schools. But I think there is certain things that you have to cover. And if you do delve off into something else, you might not have time to cover those things. And then you'll be in trouble then because you, you you haven't. What, what the fuck have you been doing? <laughs> it's supposed to be fucking. They wanted to learn about TV. <laughs> yeah, they wanted to know about fucking. I don't know. Fucking in the night garden. What do you mean fucking in the night garden? <laughs> so I thought I'd give them all mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, do you know what I mean? It's like yeah, I don't know what you say because you obviously need your fundamentals and your yeah. fucking. Your... And there, there is like. Um that's really important as well like the things like early reading and stuff like that is so important yeah. and it's really um as a teacher it's really nice to see that knowledge growing from a kid like yeah. a kid that couldn't couldn't read and can now read is yeah. like so because rewarding. we've noticed it come out it's like recently and like he's getting a lot quicker and for ages is he? just like it's hard isn't it it's like, you know it's like when you try anything isn't it yeah, you man. fucking start something new and like oh, <clears throat> it's all clunky and like even driving yeah. a car or whatever and then before time, you just do it. And I try to say this, this to Carvel. I'm like, fucking, like, when you get to the point and you can just, like, look at a sentence and you, like, absorb the sentence, yeah. you're not even le- looking one word to one word anymore. You can kind of go, boom. Does he decode it? Does he sound it out? Yes, yeah, so he's yeah, like, cool. does all like, the, but, like, now he's started to get to the point where he'll, like, look at words like, and... Or and he the, knows them already. And they're regular yeah. ones now. Yeah. And it's starting to, like, sink in. So it's like, the, and, like, and then if it's a longer one, it's like... But it's like trying to, like, find ways to encourage him to be his personality type to be more you can do it you so, can to be do more it. positive rather than like, oh i can't do it it's stupid yeah like that mentality that's difficult which he's kind of got i'm surprised like, that because you're quite positive like that but yeah but i think that kind of um disposition disposition grows over time because i i think we've all been like that yeah 
Yeah. And I think it's something that you need to, like you were saying with Lodos, how did he become so conscious? He was taught it. Yeah. I think it's the same with that, isn't it? Like, it yeah. takes a while. And yeah, maybe, I don't know, maybe he sees that in other children or... I don't know, really, but I'm sure. Yeah, because because I suppose as well, it's hard because you get like kids coming in, don't you? And they, they you could have a kid who's born in like September. Yeah, and you can have a kid who was born in like, August July, or something. August yeah, or something. It's like they're like it's, a year apart, mm. and the development because Carvel's May, so okay. he's like he's so on the May, other end yeah, of it. Yeah. He's not like quite August, but he's still. But then you say like you got someone who's born in yeah. September. They're like it does make a difference, definitely. Yeah, yeah it's um. Yeah, so it's, uh, yeah. But it's, with the reading thing, the way to build up his fluency, and it's, I suppose it's if he wants to do it or not, is to, and it, and it feels a bit boring, and it kind of feeds into the prescriptive thing of the curriculum, but read the same book a few times, yeah. and then he'll, because he's decoding the words at first, but the second time he reads it, it'll be a bit quicker, and then the third yeah. time, and then he'll start to sight read it. I suppose like music as well, though, Yeah. Yeah, like, for sure. You you don't just like, well, you'd have to be fucking really good. But if someone just plonked a fucking like, do you mean pop some prank some sheet music in front of you? I was like, yeah. go on, them. Ah, like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, keys in. I mean, you're like you're gonna have to fucking play that through a few. I'd times. I'd be like that a few months later. I used yeah, to, I'm grade three piano, and I'm still like that anyway. But. How did you um use? Do you do you still have lessons? Nah, you don't. You just nah, do it. Yeah. Do you I don't even. Are you still play it? Are nah. you not? I had lessons. I started when I was about 15 and I had this really old, really cool piano teacher and, and I, I was really into it and I started it because I wanted my beats to be better. Yeah. But, but I just, I wasn't practicing. Yeah. And she knew as well. Like I'd go there and she'd be like, oh, let's see how, how well you've done. And I try and blag it and it'd be like, dun, 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 dun. It's like, have you practiced? <laughs> yeah. I, I, Every I, day. <laughs> <laughs> and then eventually I was just like, she's, I just started telling the truth. She was like, have you practiced? And I, was, I was like, nah. And she was like, okay, coming in. And then I just, yeah. I did, I did that for a good few years, you know. That was a waste of money. Because <laughs> I've been practicing, I've been doing it for a while now, but I've been doing it all on, like, with playground sessions, which is like an online, like an app. But that's the thing. amazing thing about the time we live in now. Mm. We can learn anything. Yeah. And people, like, I don't know, even just a decade ago, would have paid, like, lots of money to be able to use these apps that we're using now. So yeah. I, do, I do like taking on new things to try and do. Wait, I hold that for I need a piss. Alright, mate. Yo, I shouldn't have fucking had that tea. Oh, mate, that was a quick piss. I know, I quick ran to the bushes. <laughs> did you do it? Did you do it in your trousers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't make it. <laughs> fucking, my daughter did it earlier, man. Fucking, she went, she pissed on the fucking sofa yeah. yesterday. So we took the covers off. And then today she tried to get off and she didn't get off quick enough again. And she'd done it on like the white cushioning. Oh, no. Where the things are trying. I was like, oh, no, nightmare. <laughs> But yeah, no, I've had my piss, I'm better, like, yeah. I had two coffees before I come up and I just had that tea and I'm like, fucking Mate, shit. this morning I had a cup of tea, green tea, another cup of tea. Because I was meditating, innit? Yeah. I, I told you I did the hour, I actually did about like an hour and a bit. But I just kept drinking. Broken. What do you mean? Because it was like you broke and you have to keep getting up for good for a piss because you drank so much tea. Well, I kind of, I did like a 20 minute one. I did a, have you, you do Headspace, don't you? Or you no. used to? I There's... use um, Waking Up <laughs> Okay. by Sam Harris. Um, yeah. I did I started on Headspace with Andy and then he just I don't know he just got very um, repetitive boring yeah <laughs> yeah yeah but uh, in general they're about 20 minutes long so it, I I drink tea when it's cool and 20 minutes is about time for, and then I just down it and then meditate yeah. I don't do that all the time you know that'd yeah. be... I generally do 10 minutes do you know I don't the longest I've done is like 20 minutes yeah, I've never done like an hour one. My mate was telling me he went down to the um, so was it the Hindu center or the Buddhism center? There's one in Bath. They've got nice. uh, like, it's not <clears throat> I guess it's Buddhism, like uh, that they do. I think 
I don't know, but I was talking to a taxi driver the other day actually, and he's a, he was a Hindu. Really? And he said he'd just come from the temple, and he was like, "Yeah, no, there you go." Because I was saying like I do yoga and, yeah, and yeah. whatnot. And he, he was like, "He was like, why?" Well, he goes, "He goes, he goes, you're a better Hindu than me." <laughs> <laughs> but he said he'd just been to the temple. He had the um, the uh, the mark on the forehead. Oh, yeah. uh, what's it called? No Is idea. It bindi. I don't know. Yeah. He had that anyway. He had the, he just got in the around and gave him all the dots on the, yeah, the yeah. forehead or whatnot, like symbolize your third eye, I guess, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. I suppose it would be. Um, but yeah, he was saying, I said, how regularly do you go? He said, well, they go, he tries to go weekly. I can't remember what day he said it was. But yeah, it's, um, it's interesting because like Hinduism and Buddhism, it's like not something you associate so much with going to temple and practice or something I didn't think of before. I was like, oh yeah, I suppose they would do. Hinduism yeah. is the fucking like the oldest religion, isn't it? Recorded religion that yeah. we know of. Yeah. It's like fucking, yeah. It's, it's like ancient. Buddhism is just like a byproduct of it, isn't it? I don't really know much about them, really. I know that they're, they have the Buddha and he's... Oh, I can't remember some of his Well, you had here, he was Siddhartha Gautama. Okay. And he was born into a family of extreme wealth. He was like a prince. Oh, I think, I, yeah, go on. And his, like, his parents kept him away from suffering. Didn't mm. want him to see people getting old. Like, if the horse was, like, getting sick or old, they're like, quick, replace the horse with another one and shit like that. Like, I mean, it's like, yeah. he was just, like, anything, like, he was in a bubble, shouting. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And he was, like, he was playing outside and one day, like, the, the, was it the ball or something went over the wall? Yeah. Or something went over the wall and he, like, got out the grounds and he seen, like, all, like, the destitute people and the sick, starving people in the streets, like, do you know what I mean? And, like, those times, and it was, he was like, oh, what the fuck? Yeah. Like, there's people, like, really suffering. And then he, like, went on this whole pilgrimage of, like... Yeah. And he put himself through, like, massive strenuous things of, like, starving himself, meditating under the tree, like, do you mm. know what I mean? Like, abstaining from so many things and all that, creating all this own inflicted suffering on himself. And, um... Yeah, like figured out like the, the was it the life is suffering and so like yeah. find meaning, meaning within the suffering type thing. Um, yeah, I mean that kind of comes back to what I was saying in it about like trying to put yourself in situations that are a bit challenging. Yeah, yeah, because you, you you see some of these monks in it, they do like yeah. fucking a whole lifetime of like not um, of of not speaking I mean, and shit like that. Because Andy from Headspace did that actually, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was a. Buddhist he did what? Monk. Did he five years? Didn't he? I, I think, think so. Yeah. He said he was only supposed to go there for like a month. Yeah. I listened to him. And I don't know if he says it on the on the app or like I listened to him in an interview and I remember him saying he was only supposed to do it for like a month, a month silent retreat. And yeah. He ended up there for five years or something stupid. Mm. Like, I mean, it's like fucking wow. I think I I use it as a a tool more than a, a lifestyle. Like a, and I think I've heard Alan Watts talk about it. Like you, you you meditate just to meditate you're not trying to achieve anything no, yeah, yeah. but i'm trying to achieve something mm. so i don't know if that's different like, is that different from what buddhists are doing i'm trying to achieve um like happiness and calmness really mm. in everyday life i'm not just doing it to just do it because i feel like well, i don't know if that would be a, a waste of time on the so because sam harris on that's the who's got the waking up app which is the one i use and he actually has a lot of guests meditation people on there and he does theory as well it's not just meditation he has theory ones and actually the other january yeah. the whole alan watts collection will be on waking up at okay the entire recordings of alan wow, watts yeah. like he's actually like officially with alan watts's family really? uh, uh, yeah his, so that will be on there and sam harris is actually an atheist yeah he's um he's not a monk he's i mean listen he's very much from the approach of um meditation can make your life better yeah because like you it's a tool like we were saying earlier, you're going to a gym to like build your muscles yeah he says you're training your brain to be more mindful through life so you're yeah. just not going through life like fucking oh fucking oh fucking <laughs> yeah. bins ain't fucking like, oh fuck's sake like fucking oh fuck 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 and before yeah. you know you're not like sitting around you like your kids are like trying to show you something and you're like fucking oh no fucking yeah, hell yeah, like, your yeah. mind's somewhere else all the time yeah and that's basically his fundamental thing of it but he does have like um like uh like like to me like like Taoism teachers and shit like on, on, on his app it's a really good one I find I it because like, it. it's like a lot more like depth and scope and he's even got uh, David White who's a poet mm -hmm. and it's just him reading like, his poems on for like one of the sections and shit I mean but he does like the meta yeah. loving kindness as well um, every time and you, so you get your daily meditation mm -hmm. which is a daily guided meditation obviously you've got your normal timer on there then you've got courses on there you got like a guy who like specializes in stoicism. Okay. So yeah. he does like that. There's a, the headless way where the guy, yeah, like talks about like imagining like not your head. What you see as the world is where your head should be. So like, uh, 
this is like your head type thing. It's like on the snap of your fingers, like fucking. Yeah, it's it's that one took me ages to wrap my head around. Yeah, so we spoke so about that one before, yeah. but I think I still don't really get it. I might for, have to spend for some me time. to try and explain it. Yeah, it's hard because it took me so long to get it yourself. Get my yeah. head around. Yeah. Okay, I was yeah, like, yeah. what do you mean, fucking see my own head? <laughs> I can fucking see my own head. But then, like, he'll he also say things that remind you. Then, like, when you're getting angry with yourself, you're like, fuck, I can fucking do it. And then you get winding yourself up trying to measure. It. It's like getting angry. It's like, yeah. oh, I'm not doing it properly. I can't focus on breath. And like, you get across like, well, then you, you the goal is to notice. Or listen to the your yeah listen li- like oh I'm feeling that yeah I'm feeling angry about this and then to notice that you're feeling angry about yeah trying to meditate and it's like oh do you know what I mean yeah. it takes fucking ages though doesn't it it does and and there's it's not like it's a a fix all thing because sometimes I'll I'll be so at peace and there's that saying about control what you can control and let go of what you can't control sometimes mm. I live that and I've got it locked like I'm not control I'm you know I'm really at peace and i feel like i've nailed it and then other times i like fall to pieces and i yeah. do you know what i mean yeah and i would that but meditation is the only th- only thing that has let me feel that i've got it locked even for a little while even if i even if it falls apart other times yeah it's like i forget it all do you know i've read a, a really interesting quote today by c.s lewis okay and it said uh if you notice that day to day nothing changes but look back over time and everything's, everything's changed. Different. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same, I suppose. What you thought you were just saying then with meditation, Jamie. It's like we don't notice the, the we don't notice the day to day. That's so true. Yeah. That but is then true. you look back, like you're saying then about the being able to <coughs> notice yourself in these situations, or whatever. Mm-hmm. You look back and you think, "Fucking hell!" Like, it's I true. I used to be fucking so anxious about yes. certain things or whatever, and it's like now, like it's like, oh, I'm feeling that. What do you mean? It's like, Wait, and it me. didn't happen all the time, but like it's fucking a lot. Yes. Better, and you do it, but it's again, it's over time, isn't it? Yeah, because even me, like ten years ago, I was like a anxious bundle of nerves, mm. and yeah, yeah, you're right actually, because compared that to now, it's very different. Yeah. And maybe that comes with age as well. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. But then, if you were to look at yourself meditating yesterday, meditating today, it's like fucking nothing's changed. Yeah. But it's, again, it's a small thing. But then saying, that, I think that it's really helped me to be able to do small things each day. Because in the past, I've always been one of these people. It's like I want results, and I want results now. Mm. Why am I not getting results? Yeah, yeah. It's like well, you've just done something. Like to me, it's like yeah, really appreciating that things take time, mm. and it's the small things each day. For example, like. Some, I know you're learning you're learning French right yeah yeah by the way I had to go on that Gaelic Scottish mate it's awful <laughs> <You're> like, <"Fuck." laughs> I fucking, yeah I left it man I'm actually doing Arabic now as well Arabic's so I'm doing wicked. Spanish and Arabic nice but like that for example of like being disciplined to just do I do 10 minutes on each a day yeah. so like I, I do 10 minutes on Spanish 10 minutes on Arabic I set a timer so instead of to-do list now I do like time boxing nice. so in the calendar I'll put my to-do list, so to speak, in the calendar, but I don't do it so it's like I'm ticking off a tick list. Yeah. So instead of that, I just time box it so it say like mix a song or record a song or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I like I I'll, I'll give the time for it. Yeah. And if I don't complete it in that time, yeah, I don't happens? get all like fucking worked up because I haven't ticked off my so to-do what list. Happens? You just do as much as you can for that hour. And, and then, then you'll like schedule it again like a oh, week later and then you okay. just constantly it's always like revolving yeah. so you just do as much as you can but the idea is to just focus on that task what you're that's supposed really to be good doing idea. that's a good way to do and things. you actually I find you get more done because you're not like I've got this to do this yeah. year, and then you start jumping from thing to thing because you've yeah, got to like do them all it's like well no between this hour and this hour I'm doing I am, this thing I'm yeah. just recording music yeah. and that's all I'm doing phone's like on do not disturb and, and, and you're, I suppose you're not thinking about the outcome really no. you're thinking about the process you're thinking about it, but yeah that's what you're doing it's like well whatever I get done in that time I get done in that time Time. That's wicked. So um, I think that that has also med- been meditating has taught me to do that, the, to help with that rather than like, oh, I'm not getting there, I'm not doing yeah. it, I'm not getting the results. It's like, well, just do a bit each day, a bit yeah. each day and be patient. That's probably what I'm saying is fucking be patience. patient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, be pa- and, and focus on the process, which is something that yeah. I think we all forget sometimes. I know I do. Yeah, it's so easy to get caught up with like, well, I want this, what's the next step? Yeah. I think that's part of us as humans though, isn't it? It's like we always want more like we always yeah. want boss do you mean it's like well i've achieved that so what, yeah. what's next which is good and bad it's just, again it's the, the perception of how we look at it i suppose yeah i mean I, whenever when i achieve something i don't really dwell on it for very long and i'm straight on to the next yeah thing. 
which yeah. is quite annoying and it's quite bewildering for other people who see that because they'll yeah. see me really care about something and then it's achieved and then I'm like I seem to not care about yeah. it anymore and it's, it's, it's I think that's again it's good to take time to reflect but like, well hang yeah. on a minute like look how much I have it's achieved so true and I watched a little clip of Lauren Hill talking earlier I saw that on your yeah, thing yeah and watched Shining Point and I was like yeah it's like no you don't know me because I, I didn't know myself then mm. and like you could see someone like five ten years later and I said like, what about like just like well you didn't expect that person to change yeah, the person's so forever changing and it's yeah. like you should be dirt on the grow and there was another one I seen with um, about how you can't always help people and pull people up to their next level of their yeah. life but because there's some people just don't want to and you can't mm -hmm. that can't be forced but a bad person can always drag you down drag down a good person that can always happen whether the good person doesn't want to be dragged down or not so what's the solution to that is that just to know who's bad or who's guess so i guess it's i don't know it's just uh, these bad vibes yeah listen to your gut in it i suppose the gut is is important man mm. like the as i've gotten older listening to my own intuition or the gut or whatever has become something that i really believe in now yeah um and and you can get the the gut feeling mixed up with just fear can't you yeah because sometimes it's like getting out of a getting out of your comfort zone is mm. scary and you might feel like your gut is telling you not to do that but yeah. i think that there's a difference do you think there's a difference yeah i think there is i think it's uh i <clears throat> I don't actually think it's your gut that's telling you not to do it. I think it's your head that's telling you not to do it. Which one? When the fear kicks in. But you've got the gut feeling. Yeah. So you're feeling the gut feelings. Yeah. Because the gut feeling doesn't talk to you okay. in words. Like your brain talks to you. Yeah. Your head talks to you in words and reads dialogue to you. And Do you have thoughts. the... So you get a gut feeling. Yeah. So your gut feeling is like an emotional feeling so there's a gut feeling and then your brain interprets but it. your brain's telling you no so you're thinking oh my gut feeling may be telling me no but your gut feeling is obviously telling you to do that like there's the thing in there feel the fear and do it anyway yes yeah i love that saying but like i think it's like the, there's the mix up between your head and your gut where you're 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 just trying to be like no don't do it your ego <laughs> or your ego so to speak saying don't do that like everyone's gonna laugh at you do you know yeah. mean like you're gonna make a fool of yourself and then yeah. your gut's like really like because what do they say it's like there's no difference between where you feel fear and excitement. Yeah. Excitement and fear are felt in exactly the same space yeah. uh, in your body. Um, so, yeah, I think because it is your brain like, is easy to talk you down from things. out of things. Yeah. Like even coming here today, mm. I was a bit like kind of nervous. Yeah. And it, my brain could have easily said, like, oh, don't bother. Don't do it. Yeah. Just, like you, you could go to the gym or something instead. Yeah. Even mine was because it's the first ones that today mm. it's, I'm doing them on my own. Like, no, yeah. I've got Roscoe there, and it's like, do you mean it's like you just bat some shit off between each other, and you think, oh, fucking hell, what if I don't know what to talk what about? What I someone? thought would, what I was fear, <laughs> fearing would happen would I, was I'd come here and then not have anything to talk about. Yeah, yeah. And then, but to get over it, I thought, well, if I come here and I've got nothing to talk about, What's the worst that's going to happen? Is Jimson going to say, all right, well, let's turn it all off. You could go home now. Yeah. And I thought like, well, that's probably not going to happen. But even if it did happen, yeah. I would still be alive. Do you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> Do you know that out of all the episodes we've done, yeah. the only time I've done that is when it's just been me and Roscoe. Yeah, yeah. We but you guys after have... for about 40 minutes. But that same day, we've recorded with three other people or whatever three other episodes and it was just me and him talking and it's laughed about four minutes so like fuck it, do it. <laughs> that doing it, <laughs> it it's like, we've already been talking like with each other and with other people it's like, mm -hmm. like what else do you mean but like yeah but like, when there's someone who's coming on you're going to talk to them about um about stuff that's yeah. individual to them yeah i get you yeah because there was someone i was going to go back to then about um <clears throat> about teaching so like intuition do you um obviously because you you're dealing with kids who are still in the very early stages of life do mm. you uh, I was kind of the good, trying to think of the question I'm trying to ask of like it's about intuition and noticing the intuition of children do you like obviously because kids are all different and it's like do you find, do you think all children are sort of born with the same power of intuition but it's like then you notice it because I've noticed it around that sort of age uh, with Carvel, like they didn't start doubting stuff because you get pressure from other watching other children. Do you notice like do, what kind of do? You, are there ways that you kind of combat that and try and uplift children who may be more anxious as opposed to 
uh, ones who are like very, very on the other yeah. end, very confident. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and for example, like with Cravel, like how we all be like, oh, I'm no good at that. Like, you mean enough? That's his head talking. Yeah. That's not his. Uh, his, his gut talking that's like you like we were just saying like do you mm. notice different children yeah. um and how are there ways do you do you even get taught how to deal deal with that as a teacher for your teacher training or is your teacher training mostly this is how to teach fucking the five times table well to answer the first question i i i'm really aware of that because mm. i was a kid like that at school who I was a quiet kid and um, I was really nervous to stand up and do stuff or and, and I would look at other children and be like oh my god they're much better than me at this thing so I, I'm really aware of that and I really do try and make sure that I can uplift them and the way I do that is just lots of praise mm. and also I don't force them to do anything like I would never force a kid to come and stand up here and perform your piece of writing you've done I, and I make sure they know that they, mm. they don't have to do that and and because of that they eventually come up and do it. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And not always, but most of the time they're not being forced. So they feel comfortable to come up and do stuff. Um, and, and just giving them time and recognizing them as individuals. And that's, I, I don't remember that being taught really, but I think it's something that I just have because I quite, I like people. Yeah. I'm an introvert. I'm so introverted and I love time on my own, but I love people as well. I find people interesting. And so, that's just something I do naturally. Mm. But as far as being taught it at teacher training, um, not I can't remember anything like that, really. You have something called the teacher standards and they're, mm. I think there are eight standards that you've got to do. And it's like um, uh, classroom management, um, plan interesting lessons, uh, wider school life. And it's all these things. And uh, I don't know, maybe there's something, but I can't remember anything. So you have to plan your own lessons. It's not like, like it's not, kind of structured you still it's like these are the topics you still have to plan how you're gonna yeah teach them. yeah but i mean different schools have different amounts of control that they have over things so mm. like the school i was at i planned everything from scratch like english and and because of that we could then kind of mix everything together and english yeah. could be then if we were doing history that week we could then bring it into english and yeah. write about what we were doing in history um but then some schools have uh like a really strict thing that they want you to do and, and yeah. as a teacher though that can be quite nice because then it's done for you yeah mm. and as much as you want to be like an, an amazing creative teacher like on nine o'clock in at night yeah it's tough you know I, I, mean? it's, it's like um i was trying to say this the other day it was uh someone was about the, the balancing balancing the rules um with breaking the rules so to speak. <clears throat> so you need boundaries. Without boundaries, whatever it is in life, whether you're an adult or whatever, like just as people, as a society, you need boundaries. Yeah, yeah. And I know that some people are like full blown, like fucking freedom, no boundaries, do what the fuck you want. It's, it's not like, really realistic though, is not, it? I don't do, think. I mean, you need, you do need some boundaries. And it's like, okay, and this boundaries, we can expand the boundaries and make you as much comfort you to be free and express yourself as much as you want within these boundaries. Yeah. But there are certain like boundaries within life that um, that keep things moving. It's like imagine if everyone could just fucking do what they want whenever they want all the time. <laughs> like, fucking chaos. I, I thought about that though. Like how crazy that would be. Like you'd just be driving yeah. down the street and would someone just drag you out of your car? And be, I Wait, want that car. <laughs> do, you know, do you know? I don't think. I said about this. Like if there, if, if society was to collapse, yeah, um, which I don't think is actually that far off. Like, but like you're I, bigger than me. You could just take all my stuff. Yeah, but then I don't think. I wouldn't want to do that. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, and then, like, the way I look at it is, like, when you look at, like, the uh, places that have come under, like, natural disasters and shit, you don't, like, see, like, them all out looting and fucking <laughs> robbing the remaining things. They generally band together yeah, and fucking yeah. be like, people, shit, those people, like, they're, they're someone trying to have their right, okay, let's huddle together, we can build a shelter then. here. Yeah. So I think people are inherently good. I just think in times of when people have got more, they then become, become bad. selfish. And there was a thing I seen the other day about Christopher Columbus uh -huh. when he got to the Americas and he was saying about the Native Americans and he was saying, it's fucking the writings that he wrote like you should read it it's so fucked up so he's writing about how these people are the best people that he's ever met and they're so genuine so kind the they, people that he encountered when he went he to the Native Americans there. he said they were like he said they're the most friendly 
uh, like basically saying like these are the most friendly people they will give you they will share anything with you and like do you mean he's like and he goes on to like praise these people how beautiful and he goes these are really the most <laughs> nicest people that we've I've ever encountered on the planet mm. and then the last paragraph he like goes I reckon we could take I reckon we could control them and use them as servants for about 50 men because I'm fucking like he's just like he's wow. like, oh, like, he's being like and it's like, like and then it's like yeah we can control them with 50 men and it's like oh, oh my god like, like the insidious like side of like do you mean yeah so i think that's the trouble like, i think <laughs> negative emotions are always more powerful than positive maybe like when we go back to like saying about trying to lift someone up maybe yeah 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 like, do you mean it's like there it's like the, they these people like are on that like so christopher columbus couldn't be lifted up into their place but he was fucking very he easy was bringing to them down bring that oh my god down, yeah that's the I mean? point man um so yeah i don't think if society collapses, which i think it will collapse yeah in not that many years time i think okay uh like the economy and the way the world is i think that it's due to implode i yeah. think something different will replace it mm -hmm. and i don't think it will i don't think it will be like all out mad max do you know what I mean generally fucking societies band together yeah. small communities come yeah. together and <laughs> they generally are good i mean if you go back to like what we were like as fucking hunter gatherers like do you mm -hmm. mean? like i think it would probably fucking get rid of a lot of people that are fucking really lazy and yeah. and do try to just come along for a free ride like and just like fucking around basically only for their own gain yeah because yeah because you, you, you couldn't really be like be that way could you and nah, not in like a doomsday fucking scenario or like jimmy it's like no you kind of need to be like there are times that you need because otherwise people will it's like jimmy it's like you will quickly be fucking outcasted from from people because yeah, of, yeah. Well, you're taking the piss <laughs> When people are like left themselves for a small community to fucking run it, I think it'd be yeah. like, no, oh, fuck that. Like, you mean? And you do genuinely want, I think, but then we've kind of live in a world where it's a few people fucking running the running show for the everyone. Thing. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean like Jeff Bezos, like his fucking how like how in tune with, with like his like Amazon delivery driver is he? Yeah, not at all. Like the CEO of Probably. fucking Amazon who's like fucking flying into space and like, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. Some factory worker, like, do you know I mean he's like? for here for people like that but like go back to your gut thing as well the other mm. day uh gabo mate you know gabo mate i've heard of him who's that he's he was in the second zeitgeist <clears throat> he's like uh he's an addiction specialist like therapist who's like addiction and trauma is like his special special field mm. um fucking really interesting guys but he was in the zeitgeist he was talking about the adhd the what? He was talking about ADHD. Oh, ADHD. Like okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, and about how it's like a lot of it is societal and it's not yeah, an yeah. actual fucking defect with a person. Yeah. You know I mean? But um, he was saying the other day, he said, his science has proven that we have three brains. Really? Your gut, your heart, and your brain. He goes, this isn't just some fucking like philosophical thing. He goes, like, they all talk to each other. Yeah, right yeah. You mean? Um, so your gut, we all know now that the gut the biome... microbiome, yeah, yeah. ...is like directly a trigger as how yeah. fucking happy you are in your head so i mean he said like we know now that we've got three brains mm. so your heart and he goes you get different feelings from each one and like science is like now you're trying to measure these and he then he goes but then he also said about um love he said okay. there is no you can't put love in a test tube yeah yeah he said but like in modern science love doesn't exist because there's no way of proving that it exists there's yeah. no like do you know I mean there's no way to measure it there's no way to measure like fucking how much love and he goes but you name me a mammal that doesn't need love to survive. Yeah. Penguins, fucking penguins are fucking mammals, and I'm gonna make myself look like a twat now. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> but like, do you mean know, like uh, elephants? Yeah, I get you. Humans. Would you monkeys. say it's love though? That. Yeah. Like, like, as a human, I think you need love, praise. Um, to survive right mm, yeah because you're being praised by you should you, you should be around people that uplift you you shouldn't be around <laughs> people that put you down no. and if you look at people that are constantly put down yeah in these <laughs> environments and they are a dysfunctional human mm -hmm. do you know what I mean it's like yeah. if you're born into like it's very it's very hard to come from a fucking a broken background mm -hmm and flourish yeah. without praise and trust and without love. something without some trigger isn't it yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and it's generally a lot of these people sadly to say they that they're born into broken broken society broken home cycle you know? repeats yeah yeah i get you yeah. where if you had someone who's like encouraged loved mm. and do you know what i mean it's like <clears throat> it's okay to fail not yeah. like fuck are you doing yeah. you broke the fucking 
glass off the fucking side and like proper come down on someone. It's like, and they need it's only fucking accident. It's like, yeah. oh, fuck's sake. It's like, all right, it's okay. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. everyone will probably will react. Well, not everyone. You might have some like proper like, it's okay. <laughs> it's from, yeah, go, go. But if say like, I don't know, my child like broke something or smashed something. Yeah. Like, oh, fuck. But I like, guess it's all right. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Then you come down. It's like, okay, it's an accident. It's like, come and help me clean it up and like, let them see us. An accident's yeah. okay. You're not going to be fucking punished and like go yeah. to your room. But some mean? people are, isn't it? And so, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah that can happen. But like that's just like a normal thing to happen. But then if you've got like like the, I didn't see it. Like I don't I ban myself from the news. But you might have been more clued up on it. But the um child that they neglected recently that was all over the press. Yeah, I tried not to died. look at any of that because that yeah. was really. See, I only heard it from work. Like someone like was talking about it like on on break at work. Yeah, and yeah. Like, Did you see the thing? I was like, yeah, no. That's cool and i was like yeah like, i fucked up it was and it's like yeah yeah do you mean it's like in the depths the, in, the insidiousness of like yeah man, humans. crazy but it, it's i wanted to talk to you about affirmations do you believe in affirmations as in like uh like self manifest yeah manifest yeah i do you know we on the louise episode we spoke a lot about that and um because because this is what i wanted to ask you so i've i've done them but I thought a good experiment would be doing the opposite of them. So instead of being like, I am amazing. Mm. I am the leader of my domain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if you did the other ones? Well, I'm, I'm a cunt. <laughs> yeah. I hate everyone. <laughs> I'm bad my at life, everything. My life is shit. <laughs> but it's true. What, I think. What, what would happen, do you think? Because that would be proof whether they work or not, wouldn't it? I think, that, I think if you constantly did that and you said that to if yourself. If you gave yourself a bit of time each day to say those things to yourself. What, the bad things? Yeah. I what think would, you would I think you would slip into depression <laughs> i do i seriously do i honestly think if you sat every day and you like uh negatively because we all negatively talk about ourselves yeah. in our head i know without I and you this to catch try and catch that and be like yeah. no stop that yeah i like, you mean i'm fucking i'm i'm great like, you mean, we've what? all got things that we're insecure about or yeah. that we but then if you actively went out of your way to tell yourself that you were shit at the things and you instill were new out. ones as well yeah that i think yeah you would like be in a life of despair and like <laughs> and i'm anxious as fuck about everything i think can we find someone to do that with no i'm joking let's not do that <laughs> oh yeah no, but fucking... everyone does that i reckon everyone goes to bed at night and everyone goes oh, i could have done this better i could do that yeah better. oh this situation here right i could do it and everyone punishes it's like i saw steam pride talk about it like even he does it all the time yeah but i think if you're constantly talking to yourself in a negative way yeah you're gonna create like an internal negative self-talk yeah, yeah. i think the hard work <clears throat> Is giving yourself positive. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. That's where because it's easy to speak. Because you yourself. you have to actively do the positive self talk. Something you got to work. I reckon happiness is something you got to work out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. definitely. It's not something that just comes to you. It's just nah. something you got to like work out. You got to be right. Okay, cool. Well, how am I going to approach this? Well, it's uh, that's what stoicism is, isn't it? It's like yeah. learning to love what you already have. Mm. Yeah. Because marketing uh, companies and fucking consumer companies prey on that psychology of a human because yeah, as yeah. a human you always want the next thing what we spoke about earlier you mm -hmm. always want what's over the fence you like achieve that right what's next I want the, I'm on the journey but like I'm always looking for the result yeah, yeah. and that's how marketing companies like they play into that psychology it's like yeah you need the new one you yeah, need the new course. iPhone like, you mean? like as a human you're like yeah, yeah yeah I need the new one I need the new one <laughs> that's how we're programmed to think yeah. but stoicism is I have that and learn to love what you already have like learn to crave the things you already have and then how so do you balance I that really with want, ambition? I though? really want my iPhone 11. I really want my iPhone 11. I mean, it's like, I don't know, I think you can still have ambition. Because then you you just have a, a smaller, like, view of what you are ambitious about. Yeah. It? Okay. Maybe it's like, but then it's like, I suppose it's like, what are you, what do you want to yeah. focus on? Yeah. Because I think like, uh, like progression <clears throat> or whatever can still be attained in such things. It's like, but then like, not just wanting things because the sake of wanting things. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. learn to love the things you you already have and then you, you you wouldn't probably want to. I mean, you'd still want to like, depends what you do. Like, yeah. say, let's take an artist, for example. You're going to want to create more art, but mm. like, you're not constantly like, I don't know, I need to fucking do the next one, the next one. It's like, you're, I think if you practice more stoicism, it's like, I love what I already have. So when you then create the new things, you're creating it with joy. From a, from a good place, isn't it? Yeah, you're creating it. You're not creating it just to like, I'm going to create a new art piece and I'm going to fucking sell it for loads of money. So it's I like, love it. I love it. Yeah. Like the new Nas album. Have you listened to it? Nah. Mate, is it rubbish? No, it's really good. Is it? And it's like, with you listen to it and it's almost like, I listen to it. It's like, oh, this guy's making hip hop because he likes making hip hop. 
It's yeah. like he's kind of like the, 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 all he's the most recent place. albums. It's like, well, he's been making hip hop fucking however long. Like, what was Illmatic out? Like 95 90, or something? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? 94, 95. I like was thinking about this time. earlier because when I first started making music, I, I was making beats and I think the main motivation was that I wanted people to know I'd made this wicked beat. Yeah. And if I make if I made music now, it would be just to make it. Yeah. Whereas back then it was mostly to be seen. And validated. Yeah, be validated. Mm. And to have people being like, oh yeah, he's really good and his beats are really good and stuff like that. So yeah, I get you. It's, it's... Yeah. But like if you're happy with it yourself and it's like the enjoyment of making the music mm. and sitting there or the journey of like learning to play the piano for example, or learning yeah, a language. See, that's where I went wrong. I didn't, I didn't care about the journey. You I just wanted for the, the grades. So yeah. better at making beats. Well, like I've done it like, and again, I think the meditation prior to it of like becoming in that headspace before taking on these things. Because in the past, I would have never had the stomach or the mm. fucking the time to learn these things. But like, yeah. fuck that. I'm no good at it. What's next? I mean, yeah. give me the easiest, quickest thing I can fucking learn that gives me yeah. results. <laughs> so I can fucking like give myself the satisfaction of like, I don't know, like, yeah, look how mm. fucking good I am at that. And it's like, no, nah, like, fucking, where's the challenge? Where's the bit that I have to fucking rock up each day and fucking yeah, yeah. and learn? What are you learning at the moment? Spanish, Arabic, piano. But what piano song are you learning? I just done a Christmas medley. We wish you a Merry Sick. Christmas. <laughs> Silent Night and Old Lang Syne. I wow. did it as a challenge. Like I started mid-November learning the, the three of them. And you can do it? No, Old Lang Syne I didn't, I haven't mastered. Uh, we Wish You a Merry Christmas was the hardest out of all of them. Yeah, I bet. Because you got like fucking hand position changes. Yeah. And it's yeah. The, both hands at the same time both are hard, hand, isn't it? Yeah. So you got hand position changes and the tempo's quite quick. I think it's 120 BPM mm. on that. And then like Silent Night was easier. So I like, pissed through silent nights. it was like do 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 just fucking like it's so slow and so like and there, you do have a few hand position changes but it's not nothing drastic mm. where I, we wish you a merry christmas if you miss the hand position change you're like oh fuck where am i doing do, do, do. you fucking free find your place on the piano and you're like oh fuck you've lost it but then um old land Zine, um was the one i've been learning so i need to practice that one a bit nah. more but i've kind of like lost interest because it's like well my holiday medley challenge is like there's no point doing it's Christmas songs now, is there? Yeah, do you know what I mean? It's like so. It's, uh, Although if you do, you'll be really good at them by next Christmas. Because like, for the yeah. like, they're basically so the, I, I did playground sessions, and the way that playground sessions work is uh, you got a rookie boot camp, an intermediate boot camp, and then an advanced boot camp, and then you get like access to all the songs. I bought a lifetime membership on it, which nice. was, so I don't have to like I can download ten songs a month to learn, which yeah, I'm yeah. not going to do. It would no. take me about a month to fucking learn one song. Do you know what I mean? But like. They need to do different courses and challenges in between, which you get in a separate thing. Yeah. But the boot camp, I've got like 100% on everything on the really? rookie on the rookie boot camp now. That sounds good. Um, so I'm on the intermediate. But the, or the whole of the rookie one is all one finger with the left hand and melody. Oh, right okay. Hand. Yeah, yeah. So the intermediate, I'm on chords now. Nice. So that's, that's I mean, I've done like chords in the past, but like mm. now I'm actually learning properly chords so that's what the intermediate is and then the fucking advance just goes on to but yeah um yeah so that's where i'm at at the moment immediate ones spanish and arabic i've just hit my 80 day streak oh, i think i'm up to like 76 or something yeah it's good stuff isn't it it is i still and don't feel confident to speak nah, to anyone but... I mean, go there. it's when they start talking <laughs> fast and it's like you think you know it and you go it's like they start speaking in spanish and you're like what <laughs> <laughs> But it's fucking, do you know that they say for stave enough dementia and the, the good for the brain, learn a music instrument, learn a language, yeah. um, meditation, Okay. basically all the things we fucking spoke about, like they are the proven scientific methods to... I, yeah, it's weird that... Yeah. yeah. Instead of like, when I was younger, all the games would be like, brain games, do things like that. Yeah. They were dodgy, weren't they? But they, they you I know, that all they do is you, you just get good at the game, at that the game. particular game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it still stimulates you. Yeah. It's yeah. better than nothing, so I suppose. Just like yeah. I think you get to a certain age, don't you? And you either choose to try and like save yourself or not. Isn't it? Yeah. I think. Because how yeah. old are you now? You're I'm a bit older than I'll me. be 36 next week. Yes. Um, will I be 36 by the time this pod? No, I won't. What day is it? No, I won't. 
This will be out next week. So I'll be 36 fr- on Friday for anyone watching. When's your what day is that? Uh, 8th January. I'm 6th of January. Yeah. Capricorn. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Well, you you the same age as me then? You, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to be 33. But oh, I think okay. the oh, 30s okay. are the times when you kind of get into a lot of that stuff in it yeah. sometimes. Not everyone, obviously, but... Yeah. Because then you, you kind of have a quarter life crisis or midlife not a midlife crisis yeah i think it's like you start thing. realizing you start realizing time is running out don't you yeah yeah i think like and but then i i sometimes think oh, i wish i'd been doing this in my 20s but then i think maybe i i might have got hit by a bus in my 20s yeah you could die at any See, time i said that it? like because like learning about finances and stuff it's like well okay let's secure yourself a future and like save a bit of what you're earning it's like well i wish i knew this then it's mm. like, maybe i wasn't ready to know that then. yeah Definitely. Well, maybe I wasn't ready to know any of mm. what I'm doing. I think I had to do all the, the stupid stuff that yeah. I did. But like I said earlier about like the the practice that I put in now has now given me the determination and the patience to learn these things and not be like, I need to get here or learn this or get to that level of whatever. Mm. It's like I'm just learning it because it's fucking enjoyable. I wouldn't have been able to do that in my 20s because in my 20s I was still like, no, I want that and I fucking want it now. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. If I can't get that now, I'm going to do something else and you just fucking chop and change. I mean, it's like having the patience. You know? Have you, do you have Facebook still? Yeah, I don't go on there. Though. Instagram uh, is all I pretty much use. I don't really use it, but what I do use is I, I look at my Facebook memories mm. and it, and I get to see all the statuses I wrote from like 2010. Uh, see, I don't They're have, mad. I don't have an original Facebook account. So my okay. Facebook account is probably only about two years old, three years old. Okay. But it's quite funny because it's a way to humble yourself, man. Like I'm looking at these statuses and it's like, is bored, wants someone to talk to. Yeah. And like, do you know what I mean? Or just rubbish song lyrics. Yeah, but do you, do you not, do you not, do you not, I find that with like songs that I've made. So if I've made a song, yeah, it's like, oh God, like, do you know, I listen back to some songs and it's like, I don't actually hold them views anymore. Do I need to take the song off or something? Oh well, no, gosh. you don't need to take the song down because that Cause song was like an imprint of time. Just like, yeah. It's like when I know that <clears throat> Kevin Hart, uh, when they were trying to like, the whole cancel culture thing is like, yeah, he yeah. needs to take back the statements, what he said, and you need to apologise. And he's like, <clears throat> I'm not fucking apologising for something when I said when I'm 20. Yeah. He goes, I don't hold them views now. He goes, mm. for me to go up and go, sorry for what I said then. He goes, no. He goes, I, I like to think I've grown as a person. And for yeah, someone man. to like tell me that, I'm a bad person because I'm not getting up and apologising for something I said uh, a different version of me in a different point of time he's like no it's like I've grown as a person I don't hold them views now and I don't yeah, do them now he goes for I'm sure. not going to fucking get up and make a public apology and fucking like it's like nah fuck that like, do you know what I mean it's like mm. I've grown can you, you, can you not witness my growth yeah. like do you mean it's like and if you can't then fucking you're probably just as fucking childish as I was back then when I was fucking saying yeah. it do you yeah, know what no, I mean definitely yeah that's yeah, yeah. right we we on an hour, are we? Uh, you are on an hour and three minutes. <clears throat> what is your personal meaning of life? Um, personal meaning of life. I don't know. <laughs> 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 um, I, I, the first thing that jumped into my head was to be happy but i don't think that's the correct thing because we were talking about like finding happiness in like suffering kind of thing in it i don't know what's yours mine it changes but um i'd say it was to um find meaning yeah a a personal meaning not like the meaning for everyone in life yes yeah i mean like what what find get finding yourself a purpose even if the world like is fucking crumbling around you to find purpose in that within your own life to make you want to get out of bed make your bed fucking you know go out and, and be the best person you can be not just for yourself or selfish gains but for the immediate people and the extended people around you if yeah. you can find meaning because you will need meaning otherwise you will not do those things do you know what I mean I, li- I like that answer can you ask me again and I'll just say that <laughs> what is your personal <laughs> meaning of life well, well, to find meaning <laughs> but not just other people's be- your own personal meaning because then you won't do those those things yeah. Yeah. so oh, huh? what happiness. yeah <laughs> she's just stuck with happiness <laughs> I, th- I don't think there's nothing wrong with happiness being a fucking that, meaning that of life that is the meaning of life like, because, because, what else are you supposed to do that's the only thing you can do yeah like, yeah but because it, 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 for life. like the meaning is what leads to happiness I think yeah, yeah, so yeah. you find the meaning, fulfillment. the meaning the fulfillment comes is what becomes happiness I think it's like uh, yeah yeah joy is good 
Mm. Joy is always good to bring to people. Yeah. Uh, other people. Yeah, because you can you can bring joy to yourself by bringing joy to other people around you, find your own little ways to do things. Yeah. Appreciate small things. The, so for that on that note, it's like the uh, if you go to like a checkout, right, or a cashier, and when you pay her, you've got a big smile on your face, right? A genuine fucking smile. I don't know. Say for example, say you've been in the queue. And your child or your missus or whoever or someone's just made you fucking smile and laugh. Mm. And then when you go to have your interaction then with the cashier, that true smile, even if it's not, even if it's just a smile of like, <clears throat> hello, like mean you're happy, that exchange for that person, even though they haven't been they're not laughing or happy at the thing that you have been, is a ripple outwards. And a they could that I think that effect like ripples outwards. Like yeah, your then, happiness and your joy is the, yeah. But then what if she gets hit by a bus? <laughs> then the ripple ends there it does but they just got, it's yeah no, I'm only joking I don't believe that yeah. maybe a little bit yeah I, but I it's <laughs> bring happiness on top like it's really it's really easy to be like oh how you doing are you having a good day yeah you completely change that person yeah for anyone that's like worked in retail or worked in a bar like you just like well you can have that person go that's a person they're experiencing their life like mm. yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Life can be shit don't add to it. That's yeah. a good point. Yeah, that's a good like point. Something to lift up from that. It's like it's trying to as well when you know when you speak to someone, you're like, How was your day? And they're like, Well, and you know it's just like it's like <laughs> trying to like empathize, but like try and like change what they're not change what they're saying, but like highlight like good things to try and like fucking take their mind. It's like I mean talk about good things. Yeah. Every time they're talking about something bad, like don't engage no matter how hard it is because it's quite easy for you to go yeah actually it's really fucking shit and fucking COVID, i don't really fucking, do that do I... anything but like to then go okay like what's a positive thing and just fucking change the trajectory of a conversation and like let that because you both then leave that encounter both feeling more uplifted where if you'd easily which is the easy option but, but to the other, down, other side you both that... leave like oh fucking hell and then you're the other side to that is though well. if you do just empathize with them and then you then they might feel listened to, innit? As opposed yeah. to, because if I'm really depressed or whatever, and I go and speak to you, and I'm like, oh mate, all this stuff's happening, and you're like, yeah, but look at all this, this good yeah. stuff. I'd be like, mm, you yeah, don't really I, get I, it. but then again, like if you're genuinely depressed and you're coming to me with like fucking, yeah, I suppose I don't want you to just be like, oh yeah, it's rubbish. Yeah, just live with like, it. But like, but like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might yeah. kill yourself, mate. Yeah, <laughs> fucking end, didn't I? But do you mean like if like if someone comes to you and they're like genuinely distressed, I think you can pick up on that as a human pre- being, like rather than someone who's just like. Just annoyed yeah, because their yeah. fucking their air traffic controllers went on strikes so and yeah. their, their holiday to fucking somewhere has been postponed and fucking like whilst these things are annoying like or whatever like it's like there's a difference between someone having like a bad chain of events yeah you're, I'm just being a contrarian I think do you mean rather than yeah, someone yeah. having a, yeah like a difference between a bad chain of events or just moaning for the sake of moaning than someone who's like actually I fucking I'm struggling or whatever like mm. do you mean they might have like dealing with grief or fucking real loss or whatever like yeah, you mean but then I still at the same time you're right I don't think you should just just, just because someone everyone's more sensitive than another person aren't they so someone could be a lot more affected by certain things more than other people other people could be like what the fuck you want about it <laughs> <laughs> fucking what do you mean do you call that a fucking problem but like to that person <laughs> yeah. it could be like fucking oh, and they could feel like belittled so it is Again, I suppose, like you people said, being funny, in tune yeah. with people yeah. as being a teacher, like being in tune with those children that are uh, less confident. Yeah. And picking up on that rather than, like you said, going, come on, no, come up. You've mm. got to read in front of everyone. Yeah. And like that fucking kid's like, oh, yeah, and it's like, a like no, you come up here and you fucking read in front of the class. Well, you got to say, fuck, were you? Teacher, <laughs> primary school teacher. You get up and you read in front of the class. Fucking, I could never be a teacher, man. <laughs> I feel, yeah, I, I used to worry that I might accidentally swear, but it's like a switch in your head. You just don't. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the class. <laughs> no, I, I have pretty much the same disposition and voice and stuff. I just don't. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just don't swear. Yeah, but I don't swear anyway. Do you find it controls your everyday? Because I'm like, oh, you can switch off swearing. It's like, well, I don't actually just need to. Yeah, I, like I haven't. I haven't sworn during this whole podcast Maybe at all. Are. No. Do you want to do it now? No. <laughs> <laughs> the um, volume. Up. <laughs> the uh, since having kids. Yeah. I never realised how much profanity was in the music yeah. that I listened to. Same here, it's bad, isn't it? But I don't know if it's that bad, to be honest. Because I, 
I used to watch South Park at like mm. 10 and it never harmed me. Have you seen the trailer for the post-COVID one? I think so. Have you seen that? Is it? I've never watched it. Like, I've never oh, watched man. South Park. It's my favourite TV show. Something. I saw there was like a, 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 a video game where one of them had like an alien stick a massive deal drop on that. Like, like, I was like, oh, right, so like, fair enough. Like, yeah, I've never seen it. Though, like, they're like, very how, on how point with everything. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're too young for it. But even like the modern ones that they're bringing out now, they're very in tune with the political spectrum of how the world is. Yeah, yeah. They're like on point. And um, they've done a post-COVID one. And I haven't watched it yet. I really want to watch it. They're all grown up. Oh, really? I've got to see that. Cartman is a rabbi. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) And like Cartman, so Cartman was always like, he would always take the piss out of like Kyle for like being being Jewish. Jewish. Yeah. He would like always like, do you mean it's like, for him to be a rabbi, it's like almost like the ultimate fuck you to Kyle. And it's like, oh my God. Do you mean it's like, but they're all grown up. They're all adults. And um, yeah. That sounds amazing. Butters is like an NFT salesman. Like he's like... so they're like they go there's a little trailer with the like the clip and Butters is in the fucking he's in the cell and they go into like grown up Stan and Kyle go to see him yeah and they're like they go and he's called Vic Chaos and they're like <laughs> they speak to the doctor before they go and he goes yeah and they're like they got the dramatic music like after COVID when all the other children were allowed back out to play his parents wouldn't let him back out to play and he kept in his room and he was under house arrest for the whole time and like he's like reading off like these like you know on YouTube it's like you can make fucking $40,000 yeah, yeah. by investing in a buy the lip with no money down sell some NFTs invest in crypto and it's like all these adverts in it yeah yeah and he's like one of them and he's like he's like he's like I can make you a shitload of money and it's like but as he's going up he's like yeah hey, NFTs and when he says the word NFTs it's like the trigger and they come in and like start spraying him with like uh, <laughs> and like the start, like the mental uh, homeless are beating him and that's like oh my god oh, my god, so like in tune with what was going on he was like uh saying so there's another one like with like immigrants are like coming in to take all their work mm. but the immigrants <clears throat> are from the future they've worked out how to create a time machine because there's no jobs in the future oh, i think i've seen that one yeah they're coming back in the past to like fucking and they're like it's like they have this like i know how we can stop them we all become gay and fuck <laughs> each other and then we won't we won't ever reproduce so they won't like we will there will be no future in that or oh yeah i haven't seen back. that one and they're like there are, there's like a massive pile of blokes and they're all having this massive gay orgy it's like yeah. so like it's like it's fucking genius like you know, yeah. it's, it's pure genius but, yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but yeah cool safe that it that's it. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, Addy Roots, aka Twisted Roots. <laughs> Bang, clap. Bang, <laughs> weird, one clap. <laughs> yeah, safe. Do you know, you should um, get Damien Badger on here. He's supposed to come on. He'll be interesting. He is supposed to come on. Uh, Roscoe. Oh, fuck, we forgot to listen to what Roscoe said. Uh, Oh, have you stopped recording? No. We're still recording. I don't stop. One's got to go. Roscoe. All right, Aiden. Uh, question one. Um, Charles Dickens or Roald Dahl? Uh, one's one's got to go. Got go. Uh, Charles Dickens or Roald Dahl? I think probably Charles Dickens. It's got to go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, question two. Wiley. Dizzy Rascal. As in, one's got to go. One's got to go. Dizzy Rascal. I love Wiley. Wiley's wicked. Yeah. Uh, Question three. Uh, Who's the best Asian cuisine? Asian cuisine. Asian cuisine. I'm so glad he said cuisine. (laughs) Oh, well, what was it? Asian or what? Oh, yeah, I'm glad he did as well. I was going to say, what? Oh. Asian cuisine or Caribbean cuisine? Um, it, I, to be honest, Caribbean. Yeah? Overall, yeah. Asia's huge, though. Yeah. Because that's what I mean. That is a lot. That's what I mean. Like, it's Indian food. Indian. It's the one for me, ma'am. I've started trying to fish Indian. Mm. Oh, incredible! There's what is that? Like, like Indian, but like but so obviously fish. there's coastal, um, coastal India, so they yeah. have like fish, things like that. I've just got really much fresh fish with just a few spices. I've just got a cookbook recently yeah. about it. Oh, <clears> it's <throat> incredible! Like the things you can do. It's not like it's fairly limited. Just going to like a curry house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's not what curry they eat anyway. Nah, nah, it's, it's more like, Western. So I, um, mate, you know, 
was like it was Indian. So I used to go back and it was like grandma would like make me food. Yeah. Like, just force feed me, it was wonderful. But like they make the samosas, yeah, for the shop and everything. But um when they had curry it was just like oh meat curry, vegetable curry. Like, and they don't eat a lot of meat either, do they? Actually they in India. Hardly anyone eats meat. Yeah. And cows like fucking their sacred, sacred animal. Yeah. Question four. Let's go auto tune. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Not auto tune? <laughs> what? Auto tune or no auto tune? <laughs> 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 Fuck's sake, Rocker. Auto tune or no auto tune? <laughs> um, nowadays, I'm thinking no auto tune, but I used to abuse it yeah. back in the day, as you know. Yeah. You? And question five. Super best friends. Oh yes. Or Grey Sundays. Oh, super best friends. Got to go. Huh? What? What's got to go? Oh no no, Su- Grey Sundays going. Okay. There we go. Super best friends is the one. There you go. I'll close that out again, ladies and gentlemen. Addy Roots, <laughs> aka Twisted Roots. <laughs> Wicked. <laughs>